Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this granny fabric shrug. It's super cozy, very comfortable, hits real low, is super pretty, super cute. And it's super easy. It's beginner friendly. I can't wait to share with you how to make this. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you get notified whenever I release a brand new video. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects and you're not going to want to miss out. The creator of this pattern was Diane McKee. You can absolutely find the free pattern in the comment section, the note section below. All you have to do is click the link, print off the pattern, be ready to crochet with me. I will also include the link right here at the bottom of the screen. All you have to do is pause the video, write that down, go to the website, print off the pattern, be ready to crochet with me. This shrug is absolutely adjustable. The pattern for it is a simple granny square. I did do a video on this simple granny square pattern. Click on that video there. Just create this pattern as many rounds as you are comfortable with. To adjust this pattern is super simple. It is simply just a granny square folded in half. That's it. And you will go round after round until that granny square, so here's the middle of it, until that granny square hits your forearm. So if you're making it for a child, you will again just granny square, center of chest, and you will make that granny square until it hits the forearm of the child. If you want a bigger granny square than the one that I'm providing you today, do the same exact technique. Granny square, as many rounds as you need to hit that forearm. Put it on real quick. Super easy. And there's no stitch count requirement to turn this granny square into a shrug. Once you're ready, let's dive into what materials you're gonna to need to make this granny fabric shrug. The materials that you're going to need to make the granny fabric shrug include a size four weight, worsted, medium, Aran, 10 to 12 ply or 8 WPI sized yarn. You'll need approximately 1,760 yards, 1,608 meters, 904 grams, or 32 ounces of yarn. The exact yarn that I used for this shrug is Yarn Be Glowing in the color Sage and Song, but really make this shrug in whatever color that you want. Really personalize this to yourself, but I thought this color was just gorgeous. You're gonna want a crochet hook, size I9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook a pair of scissors, and a yarn needle or tapestry needle to help us weave in our ends at the end of the project. Once you've gathered all of your materials, let's head straight over to actually making our granny fabric shrug. For this granny square shrug, I worked a very basic granny square pattern all the way through round 40. If you want to adjust the size of the shrug to make it smaller or make it larger, just either subtract rounds or add rounds. The rest of this project, there is no stitch count requirement. So you can really just manipulate the size of this square, this granny square, to be as big or as small as you want it to be before you turn it into a shrug. When you are satisfied with how many rounds you have made, you will fold your granny square in half. So that is what I've done so far. I've folded my corners together, so now it is a giant rectangle shape. You want the right side, or the side that you want showing off to people looking at your shrug, to be folded on the inside here. We wanna be looking at the inside of your shrug to be working with it. That's how we're going to begin. Take your two corners, take your crochet hook, and take your yarn, starting with the tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. So taking your two corners, match them up with each other, find that chain two hole that was our corner, find the corner, Take your crochet hook, insert your crochet hook into that corner, chain two, yarn over, pull that yarn through so you have two loops on your crochet hook. I wanna make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. There we go. And then we're just gonna make a single crochet. I'm not gonna slip stitch chain one. I'm just gonna go straight into a single crochet stitch. So now that I have two loops, I'm gonna yarn over 
and pull through both loops for a single crochet stitch. The next stitch is our three double crochets. We're actually going to single crochet in the top of each of these double crochets. So first stitch, go all the way to the other side, first stitch. These should line up one to one. Yarn over, pull through all, yarn over, pull through. So here's the second and the third double crochet stitch all the way through. We're single crocheting these two sides together. When you come to that chain one space, just insert your crochet hook into that giant chain one space all the way through both sides. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Great. So that is grouping number one, okay? We want to repeat this process for a total of 13 groupings. So grouping one, grouping two, three, four, five, six, all the way to the 13th grouping. So you'll have a total 13. I will meet you at the end of your 13th group to show you what to do next. Thirteen. Great. So once you've passed the thirteenth group, you're actually going to go ahead, make your way past it, and we are going to single crochet in the first two of the three double crochets. So the first double crochet, we will connect that one. The second double crochet stitch, we will single crochet on top of that stitch, and then we will pause. This right here, what we are leaving open is going to be the armhole that is really just going to go around our forearm. So don't think that this armhole needs to be able to go over your entire arm. Really just, just your forearm is going to stick through this armhole. So if you want this armhole to be smaller, all you have to do is keep single crocheting to close up this armhole. If you want this armhole to be larger, then provide yourself some more slack down on the shrug and open up this hole to make it larger. It's completely up to you and it doesn't really matter where you stop. This was just the preferred instruction stopping point. Okay, once we have stopped here, take your yarn, whatever you are still working, take your crochet hook, and we are going to flip this inside right, so bringing my hand through the hole, grabbing everything. I'm gonna put that back <laughs> on the loop so it doesn't come undone. And then I'm gonna flip it. So I am looking at the right side or the outside of the work. Okay, once you have flipped your work inside right, putting my remaining yarn ball into a holder so it doesn't flop about everywhere. Okay, now looking at your work, we are just going to make, we're not single crocheting these two sides together anymore, we're making a border to go around the armhole. So just taking one side, we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around the armhole. And I will meet with you once you have made your way all the way around just to show you what we do next. All right, finishing up, making my way all the way around. So one, two, perfect, and then you will slip stitch into the single crochet, the very first single crochet stitch that we started our armhole border with. So slip stitch right there to close that off. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends, yarn over, 
Pull that tail through your loop, pull tight for a slip knot, and we have just sealed off this side of the work. Repeat this process on the other side of the granny square so that way you can have both sides sealed. I'll meet you as soon as you are finished with the armhole border of the other side to show you what we do next. Okay, great. I have just finished side number two, sealed off the work, and I'm ready to move on to the next step. So we are continuing to keep the right side of the work, the side that we want facing outward when we are wearing it. You're just going to move to the large opening, grab your yarn, starting with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends, create our slip knot, grab our crochet hook, Attach our crochet hook. All right, so you pick the side. It doesn't matter if you start on one side or the other, just whichever side you start on, you're gonna start at the join. Take your crochet hook and that same corner stitch that we started with. So here is where we joined the work together. I would start in that same corner stitch that we used to join that side. Yarn over, pull through, and start with a single crochet stitch. Okay, you're just making one single crochet stitch on top of every double crochet and in every chain one space. Single crochet, one single crochet above each double crochet stitch. One, two, three, and then one single crochet in the chain one space. Repeat this all the way around the work and I will meet you here to show you what to do next. When you do get to the other side, let me pull it up, where there's our join, don't let the join scare you. You're going to just follow. So one, two, three, single crochet in that corner chain one space, skip over the join, single crochet in the next chain one corner space, and continue making one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. All right, you got this. You're doing a wonderful job. We are so close to being done. I'll see you very soon. One, two, three, and last stitch, great, we've made it all the way around for round one of this border. We will just slip stitch into the very first single crochet to close off this round. Chain one, single crochet into that first stitch, and now we are on to round two of this border. All you're going to do to finish up this project is repeat round one where you're just making one single crochet in each stitch all the way across the opening for round two and round three. I will meet you at the end of round three to show you how to close off the project and be complete. That's it, that's all you have to do. Isn't that simple? All right, I will see you very soon to close. All right, coming upon the very end of round three here, making one single crochet in each stitch all the way around, just finishing up. Great, all right, to end round three, we just slip stitch into the first single crochet, and that's it. This is all the pattern calls for. The pattern just says make one single crochet in each stitch all the way around for three rounds. One, two, three. If you would like to deviate and make this border wider, go for it. You absolutely can. There's nothing stopping you, nothing saying that you can't do that. The pattern does only call for three rows, so I'm going to show you how to end this project, cutting a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends, yarning over the tail, pulling the tail through the loop on your crochet hook, pulling tight, and the project is done. That's it. That is how easy it is to make this amazing shrug that looks so nice. Take your yarn needle or tapestry needle, weave in all of your ends, and you are done. That's all you gotta do. All right, so what did you think? Pretty easy, right? 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you to make lots of these shrugs. If you enjoyed this video, you might also really enjoy these other videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.